and some changes on the agenda, but we'll try to get through it as efficiently as possible. Um, I'd like to start by telling you that we have Matt Conti here from NorthEndWaterfront.com. Are you all familiar with Matt? And he filmed all of our meetings. Yes, he deserves that. <laughs> we also have with us Phil Orlandella from the Regional Review. He does a great job before you. And before I forget, we do have very good news from the city of Boston that they are going to do the swap for the um, Elliott School between the North Bend Street School and the Elliott School. So the Elliott School will be out. So you see what can happen, folks, when the neighborhood gets together and works on an issue, we can have positive results. And I think we've shown that. And also that the uh, mass stock did rule on the hazmat trucks that they are not going to be able to go through the city during the daytime. So we've, we've got some wins on our, our list and that's a good thing. Um, so now we'll do the call to order and roll call. Jonathan Sprout. Bill Lane. Bill Frederick. George Mendoza. Melissa Bowley. Donna Frenny. Ann Devlin. Talia Farrow. Ryan Kenny. Okay. And our vice president will read the meeting. <coughs> The meeting will be conducted according to the parliamentary rules. The president will have the final word of the conduct of the meeting and will cast a vote only in the event that the rest of the council reaches the time. The president will recognize the speaker to make the presentation, the statement, and then she will permit the council to ask questions. She will then open the floor for questions from the audience, and each audience member should introduce themselves by name and street address. No person will speak until they have been recognized by the president. The president will have this discussion over the duration of the question period. She will then entertain motion and session seconds from the council whose majority vote will be final. Thank you. Anybody questions on the uh, protocol and how we run our meetings here for any of you who are new to coming? If you do, we'll straighten you out. Um, report from the Office of Neighborhood Services. I'm sorry, Bill. Uh, for one second, Donna. Can I have everybody's attention? Uh, as you all know, Donna was not going to run uh, for, for the resident, for the neighborhood council. Uh, the board members have gotten together, uh, and we want to present to Donna for all the hard work. <laughs> It's from Amazing Jewish Square. Huh? It's from Amazing Jewish Square. Councilor um, Salamatina, and um, I know we've discussed at length um, at the public safety meetings some um, 
I know there's been some, we've had some noise issues and some uh, problem property issues you know, in, in the neighborhood. And um, we were kind of, um, we were, um, we were asked to maybe look into some of the uh, ordinances we have on the books and, or maybe uh, changing um, some of the ordinances we have in the books in terms of loud parties and in terms of noise and, and, and stuff of that nature. And um, we're currently in the, uh, in the process of uh, changing the language that, uh, that we have on the current um, noise ordinance. And um, <clears throat> what we're going to do is, um, there's been lots of talk about absentee landlords and, 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 uh, and, and there's been lots of demographics addressed, you know, students, uh, restaurants, uh, landlords. And um, you know, my personal opinion is that it's collectively a noise problem. So we're not singling out landlords, but um, we're going to maybe attempt, and this is just an attempt, this is just something we're going to change. It has to be um, passed in the city council when Sal files. We haven't filed yet, but um, we're going to add some language to the uh, current noise ordinance that will hold landlords a little more liable. And um, <clears throat> uh, like I mentioned at Newark the other night, there's, there's also a lot of talk about um, um, increasing the fines on the current ordinance. And um, what I learned is that we can't. Uh, $300 is the maximum. Uh, a fine can be in an ordinance. Um, certain ordinances, not, not all. Um, but for the noise ordinance, the, uh, the, the max of the fine is only $300. It would have to be changed by a home rule petition, home rule petition in the city council, and then the Mass State Legislature would have to, uh, you know, uh, do, do um, um, they would have to pass it as well. So um, we're going we're gonna to change the way the fines are distributed. You know, there's going to be like a scale. Um, we haven't figured that out yet, but it's definitely going to, uh, uh, put a little more teeth into the current ordinance in terms of how we're going to handle landlords and um, especially absentee landlords on uh, particular properties. Now, I know there's been lots of problems with just noise in the street, and um, council is going to sit down with uh, uh, some of the um, uh, community service officers on Wednesday. We're going to sit down with uh, BTD, see how we can address that issue. But um, if anyone has any ideas, this hasn't been filed yet. If anyone uh, has um, some information about how certain towns or municipalities anywhere in the country do things, um, you can contact myself at, um, at Council Lamartina's office at number 635-3200, obviously the area code 617. And um, you know, just give me, if you have any feedback or you have any ideas, you know, if I had a few constituents, a few North End residents that have forwarded me some, uh, some information and some, some of the uh, some of the tools other cities in the United States uh, use. So if you know of any other city or town or whatnot that, that has a pretty good noise ordinance new or problem property ordinance that you think we should maybe look into, um, I'd be more than happy to take a look at it, bring it over to the research uh, office in the city council, and we can maybe try to, you know, we can try to manipulate the one we have and maybe add some things into the one we have now and take some stuff out. Um, so we're open to suggestions. Um, and. Uh, like I said, you can call me, 635-3200. I work for Council Lamatina. And if you don't want to call me, you can probably see me on Hanover Street just about every day. So if you see me, just grab me. Uh, let me know what you think or what you uh, would like to see done, and we'll, we'll do the best we can. So um, just uh, that's really it. Thank you. Thank you, Stephen. Any questions of Stephen? <clears throat> Any other elected officials or representatives? Oh, I beg your pardon. I'm sorry. Hi, I'm Maria Pablo. I'm here on behalf of Representative Mayor Mike Woods. I'm just here. Oh, you're just here. Okay, well, we're happy you're here. We're happy you're here. Thank you. Donna, I'm here. Huh? I'm here also, but Steve. From Sal Lamatina's office. Kathy Grandel is here. And please come in. Come in. Come in. Welcome. And we have some agendas on the table if you want one. Okay, we're going to move into committee reports now, and our first report is resident parking and traffic with Ryan Kenny. Um, last Thursday, Jim Mansfield from the Boston Transportation Department, Stephen Pascantilli, and I walked around the neighborhood uh, quite a while. Um, we looked at the various visitor spots in the North End. Um, we'll be coming out with a list shortly where uh, North End residents will now be exempt from the two-hour restriction that is currently um, in the visitor spots. In the simplest terms, that means North End residents can now park in a visitor spot for longer than two hours without having to worry about getting a ticket. So hopefully this will help alleviate some of the problems we have with resident parking in the neighborhood. Which streets are they going to be on? We're going to come out of the list shortly okay. and give it to Matt and Phil and publish it. It won't be on here another 
Hanover Streets, no, we're not, we're not dealing with that. That's a whole different animal. Anybody have any questions of Ryan? Um, Public Safety Committee, David Marks is our chair, but he's out of town, so um, Bill Lane is going to give that report. No? Yes, um, the problem, properties task force, once again, was was, was an issue. Uh, there's a reminder that that, that task, force meet, task force meets on the third Tuesday of every month um, at 845 in the morning in the Curley building. Um, there are representatives from Boston Police, Inspection and Services, Suffolk University, Emerson College, uh, the City Council, and Aaron Michaelwitz's office who attend that regularly. Been going on for four plus years now, and it's uh, it's important that we work with the proper properties task task force to identify particular addresses and particular landlords, particular tenants who are giving uh, making uh, uh, a reason about the noise and the disruption of the neighborhood. Uh, also, there was an update on the off-campus student housing coalition. This has been meeting for quite some time. In fact, for some years, they do meet regularly, uh, and they include the meeting includes ISD the mayor's office. Uh, both. So that's um, also uh, one of the, the uh, groups meeting to address some more problem properties. Uh, it came out of the meeting that Mayor Benino was personally concerned about the safety and quality of life issues in our neighborhood. Um, they've been increasing foot patrols on Thursdays, Fridays, and Saturday nights. Um, two officer patrols now are, are patrolling the neighborhood. Sal Lamatina said he's noticed an increased safety presence, uh, police presence here in the neighborhood recently. <coughs> Suffolk University has been paying an extra police detail on Saturday nights. Uh, there's still an emphasis on if you see it or hear it, call 911. Uh, I think a lot of the neighbors are reluctant to call 911 thinking it's only for major emergencies, but this is exactly the, the venue we've been asked to use to alert the city to, uh, to parties and loud, loud uh, neighbors. Um, there has been a suggestion of having local alcohol serving establishments display signs reminding people that they are in a neighborhood where people live and, <coughs> and are trying to, to you know, live quieter lives and sleep through the night. Um, and we're also urged to call the Loud Party, pot, uh, loud party Hotline. Um, I hope you'll write this down. I think Matt will probably publish this if he hasn't already. But, um, it's 617-549-7503, specific hotline to report loud parties, and we hope there will be an expedited response to some of those parties. You can always call Sal Lamartina's office, as Steve has said, 635-3200, um, to report um, during business hours if you have particular problems with particular topics. Thank you. Bill, did you mention the name of the I did not. Actually, I don't have an update on that. Okay. Yeah, I can add to that. Um, I went to the last public safety meeting, going to the last few public safety meetings, and I know I see some familiar faces here, and they've been very well attended. And I can't urge you enough to continue going to those meetings. You know, they people have been coming out lately because they're concerned about the noise and vandalism and the um, situation with college students and other young professionals coming back from various drinking establishments and, and trashing the neighborhood. So please keep coming to those. But there's been... Um, a neighborhood crime watch group that has started and they are going to meet at the next public safety meeting right after the meeting ends. So anyone that's interested in that, know in the past that the North End has tried to have a crime watch and it hasn't worked out, but I think this is really a dedicated group of people that are earnest right now about getting this going. So if you are interested, attend the public safety meeting and join the neighborhood crime watch group that's going to meet exactly after the meeting right here in the Zara Center.